Hi, Dave here from Warrant Gaming. Quick intro, if you want this Evercade cartridge, please subscribe to the podcast, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and leave a comment on any video of, on our YouTube channel. Just say Evercade, this is the Interplay Collection 2, so you get Claymates, Earthworm Jim 2, Clay Fighter 2, Prehistoric Man, Rad Gravity, and the Brainings. Yeah, that's all you need to do. Thank you. On with the show. Hello, Andy. This is Colin. I won't be able to get in tonight. I'm sweating sure all big. I'm sweating sure all big. Hi, welcome to the One Game Podcast, episode 327. It's me, David. Please check out our website, oneupgaming.co.uk. Um, as always, <coughs> our podcasts and YouTube channel is sponsored by Games Inspired Music. Please Google it, search it. It's an um, album, music, songs, and you can actually... If you stream it on Spotify or Apple Music, whatever it's called, or you can go to like Amazon or just Google it, buy it, stream it. 20% of each sale will go to the Child's Play charity. So it's great if you can help us to help them. Um, right. So games we've been playing this week. Let's get right into it. First of all, Football Manager 2023. <coughs> Now, I played this on the Xbox, and normally I love the Football Manager games, but for some reason, I played this one, and God knows why, I just couldn't work out what the hell the buttons, how to unselect players, how to do things. It was just so stupidly complicated. I would rather just sort of, you probably can in the options, but go into the options, change the the actual button configurations. So I hate all this quick menu stuff where you press certain buttons and it brings you to a certain thing. No, just let me sort of pretend that the analog sticks a mouse pointer and let me just press the A button to select what I want to select and unselect and things like that. That to me would make it so much easier. Um, but I, I selected players that were on international duty or were ill or injured or whatever you want to call it. And the game basically sort of said, you can't play this match because your player is injured. And I was like, fine. So I found the player, selected him, wouldn't let me unselect him. Don't know what the hell was going on. In the end, I just had to go on to the assistant manager, assistant sort of person and say, please select the squad for me. And it automatically selected the right squad. And then I carried on from there. So... Yeah, Football Manager, an amazing game, but on the Xbox, it's just getting a bit too out of hand, you know, but. So the next game that I've been playing this week, and that was Somerville. And this game, um, it's from one of the creators of like Limbo, and I can't remember what the next game was called. It was another short word, but those 2D... Um, platformers, puzzle platformers that were really good, really good. Um, and this one is more of a story, it's more of a 3D kind of world where you actually have to explore and do things to get the next segment of the story to click in. It's really nice, it seems a little bit janky, but it's really nice. I really enjoyed playing it. Uh, I love the idea of the where the game goes, how the story progresses. I'm not going to say much because it's all very sort of tied into the actual story, everything that happens. So yeah, just go play Somerville. It's a really good little game.
Next game. Immortals, Phoenix Rises. Right. Rising. And this one, I was quite shocked at the game. Um, I'd seen it ages ago. Cause it was like one of the first sort of games for the Series S, Series X sort of games. And I downloaded it uh, from the actual game graphics visual sort of the screen not screenshots but the just the title screen the the art that was advertised in the game i thought it looked like a realistic sort of graphical game set within like a like a greek mythology sort of game if that makes any sense and i started playing it and it's very cartoonified very you know, like just a, a weird sort of cel shady graphical style. It looked gorgeous. And I like the way that it started off as like the two gods were fighting over how the story went and then you start the game. And the gods were talking over it saying this is what happens and blah blah blah. And I really enjoyed how the game started. I might go back into it and give the game more of a go because I, I was really enjoying it. Looked good, played well. Action, fighting, a very simple Assassin's Creed sort of gameplay style. Uh, possible storytelling, but with no epic action scenes whatsoever. Ah, now you're talking. She wins or what? That, Zeus, you'll have to find out for yourself. Oh, come on. Video games won't be invented for another 2,500 years. Immortals Phoenix Rising. Available December 3rd. Uh, next up, we have NHRA Championship Drag Racing Speed for All. Now, this one is, as you can guess, is a drag racing racing game. And you start off at the start line, you have to do some burnouts, get your tyres hot, you have to pull yourself to the line, you have to hit the accelerator, release the clutch, press the gear changes in the order to get yourself up into first. It looks nice, it plays alright, very complicated, very twitchy. But then again, it's like, what do you expect? What do you expect for this sort of style of game? Uh, it, it was good. I'd recommend it if you get it cheap. If it's under £20, under $20, then I'd say, yeah, it's not a bad little game. As crew chiefs are able to make last minute adjustments, so can't you. In fact, there is one last opportunity to set the clutch before you send the car down the racetrack. As we take a look at the many angles in which you can look at your top fuel dragster, nitro, funny car, pro stalker, and more, understand the sound you'll hear is accurate. Recorded on location at NHRA national events, when you hear your top fueler fire up, you'll know exactly what you're listening to. And now we get to see the procedure of making a run. You put the car in gear and head to the water box, performing a burnout. Keep your eyes peeled on the lower left portion of the screen to see the tire temperature indicator. Too hot, and you can blow those rear slicks out. Too cold, and you may not have enough traction. Backing up to the starting line while maintaining a proper position in the groove is important. Why? If you fail to stay in that groove, you will not leave the starting line properly. The staging procedure is as precise as it is in real life. Once players develop their finite skill set, shallow staging and deep staging are both possible. Once the tree flashes, you better leave on time. And now it's time for the fastest few seconds in gaming. Players here need to manage the throttle and finite steering adjustments. The game isn't overly sensitive, but if you saw at the wheel, you will find yourself in the wall. Once you complete your run and throw the chutes, feather the brakes to bring the car to a nice, controlled stop. You'll see the race results, your reaction time, and ET. And don't be fooled, mechanical failures and even parachute failures are part of this game, so be careful you don't end up in the beach. And that's your first look at NHRA Speed for All. Available on PS4, PS5, Xbox Switch, and PC via Steam. We can't wait to see you at the drags. Next game that I played was the good... I'll put my teeth back in. The next game that I played was Ghostbusters, the video game remastered. Now this is the game that came out in, I'm going to get the dates wrong, but 2005? Was it 2011? That sort of time. 
And yeah, 2005 is when the 360 came out. So it would be like 2011, 2012 sort of time, I'd guess. Now this is the one that was a continuation of the Ghostbusters movies stories. And yeah, it, it's it's a not a bad little game. It likes to overemphasize a lot of the ghosts and a lot of the characters from the movies. And it, you go back into fighting all the, the characters that you fought and played with, you know, in the movies itself. Um, graphically, it's not too bad. I don't know why it's a remaster. I think it's just been like yeah, the PC version has been dumped on there, and it looks all right. Plays all right. If you like Ghostbusters, give it a go. Next game, Ghost Song. Now this one was a 2D. I'm not going to say Metroidvania because I hate it when they say Metroidvania because Metroid came out in 89-ish and that was a explore, get put, get new powers and abilities to get through earlier level what sections. Metroid wasn't. It was a 2D action platformer. It wasn't until about 98 when Symphony Night came out when that nicked a lot of the elements and for some reason Everyone seems to just call them Metroidvanias, and I just don't like that. It's just a, it's just a Metroid sort of style game. But this one, it looks gorgeous. Hand drawn animation looks amazing. It, I love the style. I love the art, and I love it. it. It's a great little game. I got quite into it. I was really loving it, and yeah, I would easily recommend this game. Go buy it. Go rent it. Go play it. Steal it if you have to. It's great. Next game, Golf Club Wasteland. Now this one, I just saw it and I thought, do you know what? It's two quid or whatever it was. I thought, I'll give it a go. Didn't know what it was. And it turned out it's a 2D uh, golf game. So imagine Angry Birds, that sort of perspective. And you have to sort of like do your analog stick up and fire the shot up. And it's just a golf car set on like broken buildings and demolished areas on a 2D hand-drawn sort of plane. It looks really nice, the hand animation of your character, the, the his animation and everything looks great. I really enjoyed it. It's a simple little game. It was only a quid or two. But again, I'd, I'd recommend this game. It was a nice little one. In between putting around abandoned museums, monuments and malls, you'll learn about what happened to Charlie and Earth itself before the downfall, and how those on Mars are dealing with their new world. And all the way, take my hand. Piece together the whole picture from various sources, like Radio Nostalgia from Mars. You're listening to Radio Nostalgia from Mars. Our unique soundtrack in the form of a radio show that will help you to truly feel like the 1%. And also unlock a diary as you play that unveils even more of Charlie's journey. There are three modes. Story mode has no scoring or shot counts and lets you skip levels you find too hard. Challenge mode tasks you to clear each hole with a specific number of shots or the level resets. And iron mode? Well, make one mistake and it's back to the start of the game. Each copy of the game comes with a free download of our two hour soundtrack and a 50 page graphic novel that wraps up Charlie's story. Golf Club Wasteland is now available on your favorite platform. So drop in, play a round of golf, and get a sneak peek at future problems that will eventually solve themselves, right? Last game that I played this week was 
Necromunda, I think. <laughs> I don't know. The Necromunda Underhive Wars. I guess that's what it's called. And this one is very similar to those games of the... Um, the XCOM Enemy Unknown. Where it's like a top-down-ish sort of view. And you have to direct your men, and then they direct their men, you know, turn-based strategy sort of thing. But with this one, you can zoom right into it and use like a, a third-person, first-person camera angle as you're playing. It looked nice, it played nice. It's just, it's not my sort of, my style of game. So I was just like, mm, not enjoying it, not enjoying it at all. But I can see other people that would enjoy this. See, it looks nice, it plays well smooth everything's very you know you just it feeds into you and it's a, a nice little thing and that is the last game that i played this week lost forgotten or abandoned in the dark the only question is who will get there first So please, everyone, um, visit the website oneupgaming.co.uk. Uh, once you visit the website, please come see us. I don't know. Just subscribe to us on YouTube, please. We need to get to two thousand. Please help us. And I'll be back after this quick break. Still David, still 1UP Gaming, still episode 327 of the 1UP Gaming podcast. Um, so, a bit of personal news. I have stupidly bought a PlayStation 5. That will be coming today, I believe it is. Um, and because of that, um, I'll have the Series X and the PlayStation 5, so I'll be able to put both games up and have both videos running up about them. Um, I've also got some more t-shirts coming so I can wear more t-shirts on camera for you guys just so you can get an idea of how they look in the flesh. Uh, if you want to buy these it's at oneupgaming.co.uk and in the top right hand corner it says online store. Click on that and then you can go through and you know like look at the other things that we've got other designs other colours and things of the t-shirts. But we'll go quickly into this week's news. And so while I'm doing this, I really should have all this sort of stuff set up for you guys, shouldn't I? But anyway, <clears throat> the Witcher remake will be an open world. CD Projekt Red confirms. Uh, CD Projekt Red has confirmed that its Unreal Engine 5 remake of 2007's The Witcher will be fully open world. Revealed during its third quarter financial results, CD Projekt Red briefly mentioned it's announced the Witcher remake saying it will be a story-driven single-player open-world RPG. The studio had previously only confirmed that it would be another full-fledged Witcher game, but as the original is not open-world, there was still speculation whether the remake would resemble the 2007 version or something close to The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. So... Yeah, so that is The Witcher um, remake coming. I don't even know when it's coming, to be honest. Um, hopefully it'll be good, because The Witcher series is not a bad little sort of series. Uh, next bit of news that we have got. DC will make games connected to its film universe, James Gunn confirms. DC Studios C C <coughs> CEO James Gunn has confirmed that the new DC film universe will be linked to future video games that exist in the same canon. As reported, blah, 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 Guns was asked on Twitter if the DCEU, which now seems to be rebranded as just the DCU, will... I do like that. So what was the EU? So... DC Comics Expanded Universe? Okay, so it's just the DC Universe now, so that's good. Um, which, uh, and Tim went down the line, to which he replied, most definitely yes. 
Was it just said yes on this? But anyway, um, DCU will be connected across TV, film, animation. Uh, Astra just said yes. Nothing else was said. Confirm anything. Blah 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 blah. The upcoming Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League game won't be part of this universe, however, as developer Rocksteady Studios has already confirmed. It's a part of its Arkham world that includes Arkham Asylum and Gotham Knights. Only time will tell, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that the, the DCU is going to be anything decent, or do you think it's just a quick cash grab while they can... Um, but anyway, <clears throat> next up, Gran Turismo boss expects the series to arrive on the PC. Uh, Gran Turismo Racing Series could make the leap from PlayStation to PC, according to series creator Yanazuri Yanamuchi. Yamamuchi or Yanamuchi? Yanamuchi? I don't know. It all sounds very similar to me. I'm Yorkshire. I don't know. As reported by PC gamer Yamamuchi. Yan- yeah, the guy told Peace <laughs> GT Planet at the Grand Chisholm World Finals that developer uh, Polyphony Dif- Di- Digital would consider bringing the, its racing franchise to PC, saying, Yes, I do think so. Uh, however, the PlayStation exclusive series would only make their leap if they thought a port could be developed to meet their standards. So, yeah, so what do you guys think? Do you think. The more of these games will be coming to PC. So I think it, it's a good idea. I do. Uh, so, <clears throat> yeah, leave comments in the comment section. <laughs> but, yeah, that's what it's there for. So, the next bit of news that we've got. Battlefield can't keep up with Call of Duty, says Sony. The PlayStation maker says Call of Duty is still top dog. Sony has now included EA's Battlefield franchise in its arguments against Xbox's acquisition of Activision Blizzard, saying the shooter just can't keep up with Call of Duty. Uh, Sony said in its response to the UK government's investigation to the merger that Call of Duty has found unparalleled success that no other shooter can compete, even Battlefield. Call of Duty is not replicable... Repli- rep- Replicatable. Call of Duty is too inha- in- entrenched, entrenched for any rival, no matter how well equipped to catch up. It has been top selling game for almost every year in the last decade, and the first person shooter genre, it is overwhelmingly the top selling game. Other publishers do not have the resources or expertise to match it, given the blah, blah, all this at the other. As of August 2021, more than 400 million Call of Duty games have been sold, while Battlefield had just sold 88.7 million copies. But, I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that Sony are just calling foul, or do you reckon that there is more into it? Because I just don't, I don't see it. I think that if Sony wanted to, they could create their own first person, like first party, first person shooter series that would be well equipped to match, um, yeah, but they don't. Twisted Metal series will be like Zombieland, the new season with details revealed. Um, Peacock's Twisted Metal series is shaping up to be a post apocalyptic mash up of fun. The series' live-action adaptation of the classic PlayStation video game was announced in 2019, and some inside looks to the final product are finally here. Carter Swan, a senior, a senior producer at PlayStation Studios, spoke to IGN about how the show looks to represent the game as best they can. You've got to have the cars, you've got to have the post-apocalyptic setting. There's a lot of characters that we thought were great. Obviously, Sweet Tooth has been announced, and I think... That will be a very iconic character in the show. He's been voiced by Will Arnett, played by the wrestler Samoa Joe. I don't know who that is. Who did an unbelievable job. When you think of that game, the first thing that... The first kind of pop... First thing that kind of pops into my head 
his ice cream truck, that's the piece that's been marketed all these years. So, I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you think that it's going to be a good TV show? I, I do like the idea of something a little bit fun, a little bit stupid. I do like that. Uh, we should have more of these sort of things, to be honest. Um, and then the last bit of news I have got is... Um, <clears throat> Marvel's Avengers lead designer removed a spokesperson after offensive tweet surfaces. Crystal Dynamics has decided that Marvel's Avengers lead designer will no longer be a spokesperson for the company after fans uncovered several offensive tweets before his time working there. You'd delete your tweets, wouldn't you? Previously, one of the Avengers' most public-facing figures, Brian Wagner, was found to have tweeted several racist, homophobic Oh my god, from 2010 to 2017, as reported by PC Gamer. Oh god. Jokes based on racist stereotypes, far right wing talking points such as former US uh, citizenship, insults aimed at people with disabilities and more. Ooh. That's not good. It's not good. Yeah, he shouldn't be a f- public-facing person for the company, to be honest. That is not the best of things that you want to see. Um, so, lastly, we have the UK Top 40 sort of chart. So, number 40, Lego Marvel Superheroes, Halo Infinite, The Last of Us Part 1, The Last of Us Part 2, New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. 35 is Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. The Quarry. Nickelodeon Kart Racers. Mario Party Superstars. Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Number 30 is Grand Theft Auto 5. Gran Turismo 7. Pokemon Legends Arceus. F1 22. Saints Row. Number 25 is Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope. Kirby in the Forgotten Land. NBA 2K23, Marvel's Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Evil West, number 20 is Metroid Dread, Lego's Jurassic World, Just Dance 22, Horizon Forbidden West, Gotham Knights, number 15 is Minecraft, Splatoon 3, Star Wars, no, Lego Star Wars, The Skywalker Saga, Lego Harry Potter Collection, The Legends of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and then the top 10, Animal Crossing New Horizons, Just Dance 2023, Nintendo Switch Sports 8, Sonic Frontiers at 7, Scarlet, Pokemon Scarlet at 6, God of War Ragnarok at 5, Mario, pa- Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at 4, Pokemon Violet at 3, Modern Warf- Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 at 2, and back at number 1, FIFA 23 at 1. And that is thanks to Games Press with the GFK Entertainment software charts, all formats, saying thank you all, thank you all. And that is this week's One Up Gaming podcast. So please go visit our website, which is oneupgaming.co.uk. Please go to our Patreon site, which is patreon.com slash O-U-G. Uh, these t-shirts are available at the One Up Gaming website, oneupgaming.co.uk, top right-hand corner, click on them. Different colours, styles and logos and things. The Game Spied music is available now. Download it, buy it, stream it. 20% of each sale goes to the Child's Play charity. Audiobooks on tape has our first 100 podcasts available. Buy that and £1 goes to the Diabetes UK charity. Uh, Amazon, we have links on the website. So if you just click on them, buy what you're buying from Amazon. And then um, once you've done that, then it's basically, um, we get a small little percentage of each sales as a thank you for advertising. We're on Facebook, so please go follow us on Facebook, just search One Up Gaming. On YouTube, um, go on to there. It's, I think it's just like One Up Gaming one, um, to find us. It's also, we've got the new one, which is at OUG UK, because I wanted a, a, a short sort of thing, and I thought OUG UK sounded quite easy to remember. Just search One Up Gaming. It's like this sort of logo, but in the black and red with a white background. Uh, we want to get to 2,000 subscribers. Please, please, please. 
please. And if you want to follow us on Twitter, it's at OUG Official. Send us any messages, any comments, any questions. And email us at contact at oneupgaming.co.uk. Again, just send us any questions that you have. We'll be here to answer. So it's been episode 327 of the One Up Game podcast. Saying thank you all, and we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Go baby, I love you, say I love you, never put nothing above you Won't let go once I can hug you on the floor They hate because you let them know that you the ish Now they hate and I because you at the club and proving it And so they choosing it too late cause now they using it Can't wait from how you doing it, I know that they pursuing it You will kindly tell them now my baby's here to watch me go And for him I put on a show, you just blessed to be here so my baby goes, goes on, my body rolls on, I tell her, hold don't on, don't we can look with clothes, with clothes on, been on it so long, so long. I think we gotta, we gotta go, go. If my grown man gets, oh, you know that I love you, I so. love you. I'm loving how I swim in it No, I'm not taming her The only one engraving it It's signed and still right from her lips You need to know that she's my miss Treat her like a treasure, no I never wanna let her go I keep her right in front of me My heart, she will forever be I do this so she'll never see Life with me, no misery You deserve the world, my queen Yeah, I'm back down on one knee A boy to a man that you have seen No matter who's wrong, it's you and me I'm coming for you, baby. So we can stay happy. They have so I'm trying to work so hard for you and me. Go, baby, go now. Go, go baby, go. Go, 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 baby, go. So bad, so she bad. can get it so, so sad bad. that she loves me no bad. bad. I'm a hubby so, so sad. sad, you looking so, so mad. mad. Oh, you didn't know that. No. Next time you should check the no. ring. I know that one's a throwback. I know you see her flashing it, especially when she they gets it low. I'm rubbing on and grabbing it. I tell my girl, go, go ahead and go. go. Thank you. We're trying to get everybody on to it.